All right, Ian, uh, it has not been a uh, positive uh, eight weeks in uh, for in television. Um, they had the disastrous E3 presentation in early June um, that was laughed at by by most people, streamers and journalists that were not impressed by it. Then there was the follow-up uh, disastrous response to try to go after journalists who were reporting on it and threatening them more than one. Um, and then we have now more news coming out. Uh, by the way, there hasn't been a delay yet for this console that's delayed. It ain't going to come out in October. Uh, it's already, we're at late July right now. Um, that uh, the Amiga controller is in rough shape, uh, really rough shape. And one of the games that was a packing game that needs the controller ha is basically being retooled. So, so this is what I always try to focus on with the Intellivision. Um, and it, it's no offense to anyone who looks into these things, but I feel like there's been a lot of um, obsessive time spent on things like lag and frame count and things like that. Um, when I think the larger problem with the Amico is the fact that from what we've seen, we have no idea where the software is at. Um, keep in mind, as I state every time we talk about the Amico, uh, this was supposed to be released last October. Then it was supposed to be released in April. And it's supposed to be released this October. And barring some miracle, that delay uh, should have been announced uh, a month ago. Um even in the reasoning for this is the chip shortage, part shortage. He's missing four key components to release that, that's, the system. That's that's the, the what they're what they're claiming. Yes, um, but that should not have affected game development in any way. Uh, the basically the tale that we've been told is everything has come down to these these parts, and if those parts were available, this would have launched on time. So my question is, why have we not seen demos? Uh, I know there was the Crayola experience. There's these controlled experiences with these certain games. I want to know why we, we sh I feel like we should be at a point here, if all that is true. These experiences, these, these, these uh, shows should simply be the machines turned on, booted into the main menu with the pack-in games ready to play. Because again, nothing has ever been said about the games. These, if, if, if everything, if this would have launched last October, that means these games should have been yes. almost complete if, for a year. If there was a hardware shortage, you should still have the completed games. You should still have the completed games if really your only problem was the hardware shortage. Well, during a uh, recent video, uh, a lunchtime tour of, you know, in television headquarters, uh, Neverland, um, it, it is, uh, we got to see um, Cornhole. And apparently Cornhole wasn't any fun. And apparently them attempting to, uh, you know, the, the original controls for Cornhole weren't good. So they're revamping them. So we get to see this. And what we see is I have no idea. I have zero idea why he would show this to anyone. And this is a day after their CFO did a, did a, a more down-to-earth interview. Geek Getaway did a two-hour interview with Nick Richards, CFO, who basically revealed then that the Amico controller was basically troublesome at that point, and that Cornhole had to be basically redone from scratch in terms of the control schemes. The day later, the CEO, I'm not sure with the CFO's knowledge, does a tour video and then shows just how behind they are on Cornhole and how behind they are on the... On the on things like that. I, I did not, I'll admit, I did not watch the CFO video. I am not nearly as obsessed with uh, the Amico as people may think. I check in on it when I need to for topics. I did not watch the CFO's video, but what I saw in terms of response from both people who are excited about the Amico and people who have questions about it was that it was an acceptable interview and that they had wished all the interviews yeah, had been going they're, they're, this way they're, they're, yeah. and that he was honest and fairly transparent. Well, on, honest to, to a point. There's still problems He's we'll still get into. still a businessman. And like yes. I said, but, but, and then immediately the day after, uh, and, and, and this is something that we have seen multiple times with Tommy, Tom, Tom Tallarico, Thomas, uh, Tom to the investors, uh, that, he can't help himself. He can't let someone else have the spotlight. He can't, he has to go and do something that's akin to putting his foot in his mouth. So immediately after we get to see what he calls dev graphics, what you saw was what looked like an alpha test 
of physics. Pre, pre, pre-alpha. Pre, pre-alpha test of physics for cornhole that is a, in, in being entirely revamped. Um, the last time he did this was we talked about how we didn't see any new games uh, at the E3 thing. So like two days later, he puts out the exact updated same trailer, trailer, but it's not really updated. It's, it, yeah. it, it's the exact same footage. He yeah. can't, it, and people call him out. He can't help himself. He makes himself look bad at every turn. Um, he should not be the head of a company. That's the bottom line. And what I want to point out about before I, I turn it over to you and you say whatever you want, uh, the uh, cornhole thing. So the whole thing is they're revamping the motion controls. It doesn't look like motion. I have a feeling that this controller is a pain in the ass. The motion controls don't look like they they account for much. They're of not this really game. motion anymore. You you it's not you hold a button and you throw a bag. It's you pick an angle and then you pick a location. You pick an arc and the, and you you click on the on the screen to aim your spot you want to throw it at and, and it looks like the motion control is simply how hard you wang it to yeah so basically so, so you're not for the power so you're not aiming anymore with, with the cornhole cornhole was and i joked about how this was going to be the gem and cornhole was the only game i was honestly interested in playing it honestly was it's like okay because this is going to be their we they always said this is going to be our we bowling right this is going to be the game grandma can pick up and she can easily grandma gr- grandma we bowling she just Holds down the trigger, right? And you, you wind up and you throw it, right? That's it. Real simple. Anyone can do it. This is not simple anymore. This is now a three or four step process to throw a bean bag. The reason why the Wii Bowling was successful was because you held down a button and then you just simply said to the person who was playing it, whether they were five or eight. Pretend 85, you're bowling. Pretend you're bowling. This is no longer pretend you're throwing a, a bean bag. No, now, uh, now you have to look at the TV screen. Now you're. you're Picking look, on the touch look screen. Look at the touch pad. Now set the arc. Set it, the doesn't, arc. it doesn't sound fun. No, it's not fun. The, the motion control at this point seems to be acting as just another button press. But instead of holding down a button for a certain length of time to get a power up, you're winging it. I have a feeling you could go like this with the controller. You could go like this with the controller. You could go like this with the controller. It's looking for an accelerometer input. So, so what's most important, though, is that all the Wii games were one-to-one for the most part. Like when you swung with the bat, as you swung, you were swinging the controller. But one to one was truly added with Motion Plus. But yes, it even the close. early ones mimicked one to one fairly well. When you're doing boxing, you're you're punching with it. So this is not one to one. This is literally, and I will bring up leg because it, it, Tommy demonstrated it. Even when he did the toss, oh, it looked very choppy. It was uh, it was uh, like almost a second behind when. Toss it, and then you see the bag tossed. It wasn't one to one. It wasn't even close. So now we're in, now this becomes like a golf game where you're just hitting meters and then seeing it swing. It's like almost almost out of your control. This is not a system seller anymore. And I'm being totally objective. If this was a one to one beanbag toss, now you at least have something that you can say is kind of unique. Even though you can, there's a there's a beanbag throwing game as part of a party pack on the Switch. It exists. The Wii had ones like that where you throw a beanbag. Sure. They, I don't know if they called it cornhole. So this is bad, but what 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 was even more damning now is that this is borked now, three months before your packing game is going to be released. Less than three months, you knew it was this bad. You had to know this this was bad last year. You had to know it was bad then. It was it was not ready to go. Well, and, and Tom, now keeps- you're discovering it. Now you, or at least now you're revealing it. So now I think they're using this whole bullshit about. Well, part shortage is part shortage. When that could be the case, the software was never ready. We really started to get a lot of heat in our, co- our, in our coverage of this. Summer of 2020, we discovered uh, that, hey, there's a bunch of important job listings that aren't filled yet. Firmware engineer, software, d- multiple software positions. Uh, you know, there was like three or four positions that were like, we were said, well, these guys had, had been filled, you know, sometime in 2019 at least not 2020, and we were called liars, or we didn't know what's going on, and obviously we were correct, that they were at least a year behind. Now I see that we were giving it way too much the benefit of the doubt. They were probably a year and a half to two years behind sure. on this project. I mean, you gave this a 50-50 chance of coming out in October, I think, early in the year, and I was like, well, I don't know about that. I'm going to give this a 50-50 chance this release is next year at this point. Like, I don't know where they're at. So I'm going to go, I'm going to transition from how disappointingly bad now Cornhole has become. And I'm trying to be objective in that because that actually looked interesting to me, honestly, Cornhole. But all jokes aside. Now we're talking about the CFO's interview that he did. And I keyed in on some quotes and I watched this at 2x speed the best I could. Um, there have been some games in development that have, have shown lag, but it's not systemic. 
If it's not systemic, why is it on several games that we've seen then? That's all I'm going to say. Why, why is it so, you're claiming it's software specific to certain games then? I think that's bullshit. He said, we are not Ferrari, which is funny because Tommy owns a Ferrari. They're, in terms of, of then, you know, we're not going to be the higher class system. I would say, why are you then uh, charging Ferrari console prices then right. for your system? Why are you charging 250 to 300 when that's where, you know, you can get an Xbox Series S or a Nintendo Switch? Why, why are you charging that much for it then? They confirmed, which we always knew. I want, I want us to be wrong on something. It's almost too easy being correct on every fucking thing about our predictions about this. They said it, the, 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 whatever you want to call it, physical, download package and a key. All games are coded to the console. You're going to basically download, you know, or you're basically going to unlock the games that are on the console. That's what, that's what he said. You're unlocking them. To yeah. play them. Yeah, it's, it's not, a, it's it's not a physical download cord. No, it's not. And it never was going to be, right. no matter how many times Tommy said, we've got a big game-changing thing uh, we're doing with a, with a, with a, uh, uh, an influencer. I, I mean, no. it's just, uh, just, just saying anything just because they be, have nothing. Be honest. Say we don't have physical media. It's a, it's a salt. It's a, we're going to put a fucking RFID in a fucking box. I'd at least respect the honesty. Then he said in the retro space, uh, Nick, Nick, the C CFO said, in the retro space, physical media has a loaded definition. No, it doesn't. Physical media has a, has a distinct definition. Yes. It is media that is played off of it that you use in conjunction with the console. Yes. That is what physical media means. It's on the media. Your game is not on the media. You are selling a key to get to download basically the media. When Capcom sold a box with a pin and a download code in it, they didn't call it physical media. It's not a loaded definition. You are claiming it to be a low definition because you know it's horseshit to call this physical media in any way at all. And you and you have strung along the fucking, uh, I don't know, 45 to 60 year olds that are interested in the system because they remember uh, you know, placing in their Astro Smash cartridge. That, that's what it is. Call it what it is. Um, now we get to how far behind they are in game development. Remember they're supposed to launch with, what, 40 games? Something like that, 30 to 40 games originally was supposed to launch with? Yeah. Something like that. Now they, they, uh, Nick is being honest and saying we have 10 or teens of games entering their final stage. Entering their final stage. This console was supposed to come out October 2020 and you still do not have finished games. I would have asked, why haven't they be fi been finished if we are a year behind schedule? Right. What, what was preventing the software devs from finishing? And they say, well, they didn't have dev kits. I would say, well, isn't, aren't these Unity games? Like, like what, what, what did they need? Like, why are they that? So that's shocking. And if it's 10 or so, what I would ask then also, how many of those 10 were only being worked on because they were funded through German taxpayer money for that weird Bavarian arts grant, like Shark Shark and Skiing and Cornhole and Astro Smash and a few others that are basically being worked on because you got money to pay developers to work What's on. What's the status of independent third-party developers yes. that are known? And there's two that I can think of, and it's Choice Provisions and Other Ocean. What is the status? What are the status on those games? You're talking about, what was it, Breakout, uh, Night Stalker, uh, the D&D &D game? Cloudy Mountain. Cloudy yeah. Mountain. Like, where are these games at that... We don't talk about Earthward Gym. That hasn't been worked on at all. No, I mean, it's, it's laughable uh, to no, even pretend like quite. that's being worked on. So where are these games that aren't either some one-off mobile port like Evil Knievel that already existed or Rigid Force Redux, a, a game that already existed on multiple platforms, where are the games that are truly original at that weren't uh, funded through taxpayer dollars, through, through German taxpayer That's what I want to know because that would tell me the health of the company. Yes. What's the health of the of these of these basically first party? It would games? tell me about the actual uh, excitement about it too because it's not related simply to um, in television itself. Yes. Um, and then finally, the one quote I'll talk about, if we can achieve half of what good board games and card games achieve, I think we'll find our niche. So, I, so that's, if that's what your, if that's what your aspirations are for the, for the life blood of your company, we want to achieve half of what good board games and card games can achieve. I think we'll find our niche. You are in trouble because board games and card games is, is a whole other avenue. And when you pull out a board yeah, game, why are you games, talking about, uh, why are you talking it's bizarre to, for, to say that 
Now, maybe it's just, you know, he wants to just say, like, okay, well, good board games have their own market. And we have our own market. I would just say then you can't compete with board games because the board game is like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Card games is like, uh, you know, what, a pack of Uno cards is what, $7? A lot you know? of modern board games are very expensive, closer to 50, 50 to 60, okay. but still. But whatever. You have the old ones laying around for 30 years. You go to the flea market and buy them. You sure. Know I mean, you're not usually buying new board games every year. You buy them and you hand them down. The game of life is the same one from the 80s. Monopoly is the same one for the last, uh, you know, 70 years. Here's the point, though, is that that experience is entirely different. That is truly simple to get eight people around a board game, six people around a board game, because it's all right there. You're not passing controllers around. You're not downloading apps to have grandma try to figure out. A board game is very simple. A card game is very simple. Hooking up a game console, having people download apps to, to get there is, is the opposite of simple. It is the opposite of simple. Something that I did want to bring up that I think you did too that we didn't, and unfortunately it would, we should have brought it up earlier when we were talking about Cornhole. Um, Tom even says in a post that he made to Atari Age that it worked fine with the phone, but it wasn't fun with the controller. A huge admittance that the entire thing that your ego has refused to change that you had to have for the system. This controller. This Intellivision controller, awful. you just said it. I mean, you came out and said that it was awful. It works fine with the phone, but it doesn't work with the controller. Well, so then I would ask, and like, okay, so what tech is in the phone that's not in this controller? I mean, I mean like, what is happening here? Or, or is it just we're going so cheap on just the... bargain basement tech, I Are guess. we going so cheap on the phone that the... The, the controller? The accelerometer doesn't work properly? Or, or, is it, or is it just software stuff? Again, we can't figure it out. And I think it's all a combination of that. I think it's just that I think they went cheap on dev. I think they'd have money to hire people to do a console properly, and they've been going cheap on the dev for years. And that's not to say the people involved aren't doing the best they can, but it's, it sounds like they're either undermanned or outmanned on ter in terms of what they need to get a successful console launched. Yeah, keep in mind, when I talk about this, I'm not trying to take shots here at the people who are trying to get the job done. Oh, this no. Is, this is squarely aimed at the idea and Tommy Tallarico. Yeah, it's not on them. It's from the top down, decision making. You get hired to do a job, you do the job best you can. It's not on you. You're not the one who, uh, who came up with an awful idea for uh, a, a controller based upon one of the historically worst controllers ever, the Intellivision. But he controller. liked it, so... But he liked it. He liked it when he was 10, so we're going we're gonna to do that, even though it's not based upon the original Intellivision, and it's not based upon nostalgia, which is obviously you know, horse shit. Yep. It is. Um, and then just a couple other things. He said the Amiga controller wasn't as fun and accurate as he wanted it to be with Cornhole. And when you, when you see just stuff like that, um, you just know that they're so far past the point of no return on this controller. They can't get rid of this controller, even though we said get rid of the fucking controller way back, you know. But I, I think what you're going to see going forward, um, if this comes out, this will be a repeat almost entirely, I would say, of what the Atari VCS did. It's going to be we're going to get out the backers, maybe make a few more because that's part of the run, and maybe some stores have a limit out. You're not going to see Walmart carrying this every Walmart across the U.S. And that's not no. going to happen. We're going to be lucky if this gets out to backers, I believe. I, I believe we'll be lucky. I, I mean, I hear things on the street. I hear that after the E3 presentation, maybe they lost a decent amount of pre-orders because people lost faith in it. Even on Atari age, people are losing faith, faith after realizing, hey, Cornhole's going to play like shit. It ain't going to be Wii Bowling. That's for sure. Right. So, yep. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. So, and the CFO and the CEO got to got to you know get on the same page. I, I I'd be shocked if the CFO said, "Hey Tommy, I want you to do a video showing how behind the fucking times we are on cornhole and that yeah. we are not prepared to come out with this. Even if the hardware was ready, now the software is lagging behind. You know, like so, it's just unprofessionalism. And you know, I, I guess I, I don't know why they're waiting to, to do the delay. Why are you waiting to do the delay? I mean, why? Why are we waiting on this Because delay? I have a feeling they know they're going to lose even more money. But and you're going to lose it anyway. It makes you look worse. You right. can't hold back no, bad news. It's bad either way. But, I mean, as you said about the interview, uh, apparently they said that they, they need more money. They Oh, they, yeah. They they're going to do they, another investment They round. need another round of investment. Oh, yeah. We're going to see another round of investment. This is not in any condition. Like I, The uh, people who still think this is all roses is just... Oh, it's It's weird. It's weird. It's absolutely strange. It's real strange. You have either a, a, a strange financial attachment or emotional attachment or some weird combination thereof where like, you cannot see that the health of this company is really bad and that they are uh, more than a year behind schedule, if not two, it looks like, and that um, your best case scenario is getting 
you know, a, a shoddy product at this point. Yeah. That's your best case scenario is getting a shoddy product. And there's other issues uh, I hear with the controller. And we see evidence, we saw evidence at the Corolla event, Corolla event where uh, Tom had four different Amico controllers trying to get one to work and sync up. And the kid's waiting for right. the controller. And if this was fully functional, you shouldn't be figuring out, well, well, I can't get one of four controllers to sync up. There's some, there's some issues here. And one more time, before we get the response that they're months away, this was supposed to be released last October. They're not three months from launch. They're nine months late. They are a pregnancy late and soon to be a year. So there you go. All right, that's all for now. But um, yeah, you fucked up Cornhole. That's the one thing I honestly wanted to play was Cornhole. And you fucked it up. <laughs>